Hey everyone, welcome back to A New Way to Museum. I'm Reese Barrick here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History in Hayes, Kansas. And we're gonna talk today about uh, some of my favorite cool animals called mosasaurs. And if you're excited about that, make sure you go back and hit subscribe and like, and you'll get to see a lot more cool videos like this. Um, mosasaurs, awesome. They're a very interesting group of animals because they are basically giant Komodo dragons, big lizards, that, except they lived in the water. And they're kind of fascinating because they spread all over the oceans in only about 30 million years. So they invaded the oceans about 90 million years ago, which is at the last half of the Cretaceous. And if you think about that, um, there's all kinds of other giant marine sea monsters that lived in the oceans for since the Triassic and in, in the Jurassic, and they were there were giants, and so it was not really a safe place for smallish lizards to in, try to move into the oceans in the Cretaceous. But there was a lot of food there, so it was a tempting place to to move into. Uh, we even uh, see all kinds of animals moving back into the ocean because there's so much food. So Mosasaurus did it with a real bang and a lot of panache and they did all kinds of really cool things. Um, they got to be super giants. Um, they got, lots of them were pretty small and they ate a whole variety of different things and they did it in a very short period of time. So Ichthyosaurus had been in the ocean since the Triassic um, uh, uh, plesiosaurs, been in the oceans since the early Jurassic, and yet mosasaurs were very latecomers and they did all kinds of cool things. What are they? Well, like I said, they're marine lizards and they're named mosasaurs because mos is, comes from Latin, which means muse, and these guys were found by the Muse River uh, in so that's sort of where they got their name was locality based um, and saurus from lizard. And so they don't really have anything to do with Moses or anything biblical like that, even though they're called mosasaurs. Um, they're also funky because they're lizards, but they're also very closely related to snakes. Um, they actually was a group named for these guys called the Pythonomorpha because they thought they were very closely related to pythons. And you can actually see one of the places where they very much look like um, snakes, and that is in their teeth, in their skulls. It's a variety of nice big giant teeth, but when you look really closely, inside their, their jaws, their upper jaws, they've got a second set of teeth. So you can see there's an outside row of teeth and an inside row of pterygoid teeth, which is just like snakes. Snakes have these same teeth on the uh, middle of their, their upper palate. So that's kind of a, an interesting thing. And lizards don't do that. Lizards don't have um, the second row of pterygoid teeth in the middle of their jaw. So they do have a lot of characteristics of snakes and characteristics of lizards. Matter of fact, it's still kind of hotly debated with people doing all kinds of DNA work on animals to try to figure out what these guys are mostly related to. On the other hand, snakes and monitor lizards are fairly closely related themselves, both having forked tongues, which is kind of really weird to think about a, a marine animal having a forked tongue. Yeah, who knows, but it's kind of fun to think about. So Mosasaurus started out fairly small, 90 plus million years ago, invading the oceans, and they rapidly evolved, evolved to do many different species and genera and we're here looking at some really big, cool ones from uh, Morocco. And again, we're here sort of on the set of Sahara Sea Monsters, um, our traveling exhibit, which you've got to go see whenever it's at a museum near you. But it's kind of interesting. So we've got a couple of giant skulls here. This guy over here is Tylosaurus. And it's kind of cool. It's, it's kind of one of my favorites because Tylosaurus here is from Morocco, but there's also a species of Tylosaurus from Kansas. And it's a matter of fact, it's Kansas's, one of Kansas's two state fossils. So Tylosaurus 
got around the oceans very well. They were large and they could swim really well. And Tylosaurus has teeth that are kind of piercing. They could grab and they could pierce things very well. Um, but they, they were also really large. So they had a certain types of food that they were going to be really good at eating. And Tylosaurus would get to be 33, 34 feet long. So they got to be really large. On the other hand, over here, we have Pronathodon. Pronathodon's also a giant mosasaur. And, you know, they kind of look similar. They've got their nostrils up here so that they're easy for them to breathe um, at the surface of the ocean. But their Pronathodon's teeth are much rounder, thicker, um, more sturdy. And they only have, uh, uh, they're much more bone crushing, potentially, right? So they're kind of like the Tyrannosaur of the oceans. So they could take really stout things and crush them. Tylosaurus is going to be more able to, to pierce things, but doesn't have a lot of sharp edges, so it's not really slicing or cutting um, as much as it is piercing. And so these are two giant mosasaurs that are doing different things. Now, if you've watched Jurassic Park, you see Mosasaurus, and Mosasaurus is even another large uh, giant mosasaur. Interestingly, also has been found in Morocco. And he come take a little walk with me. It's kind of cool. Because instead of just the skull, we've got a whole skeleton of Mosasaurus um, here. And you can see very long giant paddles um, that they could use for steering while they're swimming. And you come along here and you can move up to the skull of Mosasaurus. And they've got another set of types of teeth. Mosasaurus has uh, pretty much cutting sort of teeth. They've got three to five surfaces that have some serrated edges. So they've got some good, um, very much cutting uh, type teeth. So we've got three giant Mosasaurus. They have three different styles of teeth, which means they could partition up all of their food resources um, and eat different things. So some of them are going to eat you know, a little more fish things. Some of them are going to eat, eat more of each other. Um, they could all pretty much eat whatever they, they could, they could uh, catch. But um, sort of they were already evolving into different niches, so they weren't competing with each other for the same food resources. And yet they all got to be giants, which is kind of cool. Um, there was also mosasaurs that evolved very button-like teeth that were basically just crushing clams. Um, so, and there's also very small mosasaurs, like if we wanted to look over this way, there's a little tiny one called Halosaurus, and they got little tiny sharp pointy teeth. So they're basically going to be grabbing and catching fish, um, and with little spiky teeth that they can hold on to, uh, things that they catch. So this all happened in only the span of about 20 to 25 million years. There's this huge diversity of these animals. And you think about it, that's a very short time period. And during that time, they basically moved into the oceans, evolved into all these different sizes and niches, and outcompeted all the other marine sea monsters that were, had been around for millions and millions of years before they even showed up. So um, they were very wildly competitive um, and really took over as the main sea monsters in the Cretaceous, which is kind of cool. And the other thing that's kind of fascinating about them is because they're sort of pythonomorpha, if we want to take back a look here, see this very cool mosasaurus. They had back paddles and they had front paddles. And that's because they were going to swim kind of like a lizard with, with their tails, like a lizard or like a snake moving sideways back and forth. So they got to keep both their front paddles and their hind paddles for steering because of the way they're moving. But the other fascinating thing is these guys did really get large and there's latest evidence suggests that they had a fairly high metabolism. So with a high metabolism, they had a whole lot of um, food they had to have. They grew fairly rapidly. And it also means 
they weren't skinny like snakes and modern lizards. They likely got big and chunky. And if you really wanted to take a look at them, they might remind you more of a whale than they would of a lizard um, going and living in the, in the oceans. So mosasaurs, very cool animals, take over the oceans very quickly and just still can't make it through the end of the Cretaceous. The doggone asteroid wiped out all the cool things, man. So anyway, you get a chance, find out more about mosasaurs and um, come visit us here at the Sternberg sometime if you get a chance because we've got lots of mosasaurs. Again, some of our favorite animals and we will see you again next time on A New Way to Museum. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.